Good morning. Today I want to talk about pole arms. More specifically, pole arms as they are used in role playing games. Now, a pole arm basically is a type of weapon. It's got a long handle with a some sort of offensive head on it. Uh, usually, the, mo the most famous is probably the um, halberd. Uh, got a big axe-like blade on it and a spike coming out of the end and usually a spike coming out of the back of the axe head. Um, historically speaking, pole arms have been used for hundreds of years. Um, pretty much since the beginning of armies. Uh, in some cases they were just spears, you know, extra long spears. Um, but you know, that still counts as a pole arm because it's not your standard. You know, it's, it is a blade of some sort, or in this case, a point on the end of a long pole. So it still counts as a pole arm. Um, and so role-playing games came out, and someone decided, let's put pole arms in role-playing games. And that's where it became stupid. Um, so, like I said, pole arms have been around for a while, long time. Um, so why do I think they're stupid in role-playing games? And this is because primarily pole arms were designed to be formation weapons. You got 20 guys all with their pole arms all attacking with them. Um, and they work great like that. Now, So, why don't they work good as standard one-on-one -on -one melee weapons, in my opinion? And again, this is mostly my opinion. I've, I've never tried to fight with a pole arm, so I can't, can't say it's any more than my opinion here. But um, I think some people would agree, and I've looked over this and thought about it. So, your standard sword. Um basic sword ranges, the blade ranges from somewhere between two and a half to three feet maybe um, in length. They make them longer. Um, if they make them longer, usually longer than that, the air typically takes two hands to wield them. Uh, again, not a sword expert, but just, just from watching people use them and watching videos from people who talk about swords, no one specifically said this, but just watching them, it seems to be that, you know, that, that seems to be the common theme going on here. Now, a sword you hold by the end, and you swing it around, but again, it's not that long. If it gets longer, it takes two hands to wield. So, um, halberds are, well, not hal not just halberds, but pole arms in general, they average somewhere between six and eight feet in length. So you aren't going to be swinging your halberd by the end here because it's going to be too heavy. You're going to want to hold it in the middle somewhere, which typically means you need part of it sticking out behind you. So yeah, can't do it with a paintbrush. Um, so As such, you can't have people running around behind you or else they're getting in the way of your halberd as it, you stick it out. Uh, can't have chairs and tables behind you. So you have this idea of my adventure party goes into the tavern and I've brought my halberd with me, or you know, my other pole arm. It's sort of ridiculous if we get into a bar fight, which is really the only reason to bring a sword with you as you think you're going to, or a weapon into a tavern as you're expecting to get into a sword fight. And just just the idea, you know, everything behind me, furniture, people, you know, support beams are going to get in the way of this bit of the pole arm that's sticking out behind me as I use it. That's, that's what most... Most pole arms were designed for was general thrusting. 
you know, even the ones with the fancy, you know, the hollow bridge, it has this big axe blade on it, but it also has this big spike, the spike on the end, you know, I've heard references to it being one to two feet long. Some people say some of them were about three feet long. It was primarily a poking weapon. You get your formation, you got a large line of people all poking. If they're, you got 20 people standing on either side of you and you're trying to swing this thing like a sword, you're going to start getting into each other's way. Um, so why did it have this axe blade on it? Well, one of the enemy f trips, you can just whack them with the axe blade on the ground, maybe. That's one potential reason. Um, I've seen some people say, you know, all these extra little hooks on it, so as you're pulling back, you can try to trip someone, you can try to disarm them, you can try to hook it on their armor and pull it loose. Um, but it, it was still primarily a thrusting weapon, not a swinging weapon. Um, just the, the general, you know, again, because you have this extra bit hanging behind you, it really limits how much you can swing it around. Um, you know, swords, I've seen people use swords and you can do all sorts of twists and stuff like that. Halbrids, or, you know, other pull weapons, I keep saying halbrid, I, I actually like the halbrid sort of, again, when it's used properly. Um... You're, you're really limited to how you can use it, to how you can swing it. Uh, and that's one thing, you know, some, there, there have been some RPGs which have tried to limit how much, you know, I can attack the people on this side of me because I can swing my blade that way. The people on this side, not as well. And, you know, people have counter-argued, but it has a spike on the back of it. Okay, well, the spike's going to do different damage. Now we have to write extra rules for, are you using the spike on the end or the back or the main blade? You know, what kind of damage are you doing? And most people, you know, most games I've seen have not done that, or no game that I've seen has done that, actually. So I'm going to say that that's a bad argument. Um... <clears throat> You've got reach with the halberd. Or, again, pull weapon, pull arm. And so that's one thing people like about them in games is, oh, I can hit someone who's farther away from me and they can't hit me, and ha 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 ha. Now, there have been some games which was ever written in, yes, I can hit someone a certain distance, but if they close with me, I can't hit them. The pull arm only works if they're standing an extra square away from me. And that's, that, I like that rule. I mean, it's, it sort of reflects reality. Now, again, we have all these extra spikes. You know, if someone gets too close to me, I can just jerk backwards and maybe get them in the back with one of these extra spikes. Because some of these, you know, wh why, do, why do some of them curve down to the points facing towards the person who's holding it? And again, like I said, one reason was, you know, maybe you can try to trip someone and disarm them. Or if someone does manage to close with you, you can just jerk back and have the spike hit him in the back. Or, you know, point. That's facing, seemingly facing the wrong way. Um, that's believable, but it's one of those, is it advantageous? They, they have to be on the right side of the pole. So if I've got my pole arm and the spike's on this side and they step on that side, I can't do that to them. Oh, I got, I got an extra little pointy thing sticking out there, but yeah, it's going to hit them flat instead of pointy, unless I try to angle my pole arm so that it hits them. So, it's, that's another problem. Again, formation, yes, you have limited amounts to swing it, but it's designed for, if you've got a bunch of people doing the same thing, that's all you really need, you know. A bunch of people thrusting, a bunch of people, you know, if they do decide to try to do a ch overhand chop, and like I said, <clears throat> it's unlikely they would use the overhand chop unless, like, the line of people they're facing have shields. Because I think that would do more to break up their formation than trying to thrust through the shields. But, again, that's my opinion. That's the sort of thing you would do once and then switch over to thrusting um, if it didn't work the first time. Just because you've got this long, you know, this line of people fighting trying to <clears throat> maneuver. Um, again, you have reach with it. 
I have not seen a game where reach prevents you from reaching around an ally with it. Now, again, formation weapon. Sometimes they had two lines, and they would have people, you know, in the back reaching through, and people in the front doing the main part. Uh, I must, I, I'm assuming if they did that, then they would space the front line out a little to give the people in the back more room to reach, more more maneuverability. Um, I could be wrong on that. Uh, RPGs, when they do this, they, they make no... No penalty for trying to go, you know, if I'm shooting with a bow in an RPG, if I have to shoot through an ally, I take a penalty. My pull arm, if I have to reach around my ally with it, no penalty. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, ooh, the pull arm is a cool weapon, people are going to want to use it, let's include it in the game and put no penalties on it, otherwise no one will want to use it and it won't be as cool anymore. Um, so like I said, formation weapon, people didn't go marching down the road with these things, you know. You go, you know, changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace, they got, you know, some of them carry pole arms. That's, that's more of a parade thing, you know, it's, it's exhibition. It's not going to war. Going to war, it's we march down the road, all our pole arms are on a cart. And then when we get to the battlefield, we hand the pole arms out and the people carry them down into the battlefield. You know, it, it's it's sort of ridiculous expecting, you know, these people to go to, around with these oversized weapons. You know, formations, marching, all the all the military stuff. It's real important as you get closer to the battle. As you're heading towards the battlefield, as you are, you know, getting from here to, you know, the place where the battle is going, you know, moving troops. You know, the 14th Regiment needs help. We got to get people there. They don't line up and all march with their, you know, if they got two or three miles to go, they get there as fast as they can. Then when they get closer to the field, they get into formation and do all the marching. And so, like I said, going to your battlefield, you know, from the camp to the battlefield, usually, you know, people camp fairly close to the battlefield. From the city to the camp where they're going to, you know, fight the battle, things are a little more... I'm not going to say haphazard, a little more relaxed. And so, you, know, you don't have people going down the roads trying to balance this pole arm, which is you know, oversized weapon. You have all those on a cart neatly stacked. The people get there, you pass them out when you get to your camping ground or when you get closer to the battlefield. Um, they are... Awkward weapons, or they can be awkward weapons. So basically, now again, different types of pole arms. So some, some, which have survived through history. You know, you you look at you know charts and you can actually see like timelines of pole arms. You know, and how they differed and how they changed during history. And some with smaller heads, you know, axe heads spears, whatever, survived a long time. And so you have less weight. The handle itself doesn't have to be as thick because you're not swinging as much weight around. Uh, you still want your handle to be thicker than like your general staff just because, you know, the longer something is, the more stress you put on it, the more likely it is to break. So you want it, you know, the longer the pole arm, the thicker you want the handle. But also, the heavier the head, the thicker you want the handle. Otherwise, again, it's more likely to break. It's harder to control. You know, something on a thin head where the, the head, if the handle can waver just from swinging the weight of the head around, it's a bad thing. Um, so, the larger your pole arm, the heavier it's going to be. You're carrying this thing around you. Unless you have someone to carry it for you, you're wearing yourself out more often as you carry it. Um, and yes, there have been videos of people doing things in armor, and you know, they can, yeah, yeah, 
you had to be in shape if you wanted to wear armor and you wanted to be a fighter and stuff like that. And so this would have been a normal part of your life. But at the same time, carrying extra weight when you don't need to. You know, this is why they had squires. This is why they had pages and squires and, you know, armor bearers and stuff like that. It was to carry the extra weight when they didn't need to. But role-playing games, people don't have those as much. So my fighter's got to carry his pull arm around with them everywhere he goes. Into the tavern, even though that's stupid. That's... We go into the tavern. I'm fully armed. I just lean my pole arm up against the table while I eat. I mean, that's, this is the sort of thing. When, when I run games, I'll have like people kicked out of the tavern for bringing pole arms in, just because we don't want your we, you're, you're provoking a fight. We don't want you to provoke a fight. Get out of here. You know, people. You know, I, I I do that with other things. You know, people go in. I I cast detect evil. You 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 walked into a bar. You cast a spell. The bartender doesn't know anything about magic. He just saw you cast a spell. So he doesn't know that this is really a harmless spell. So he, he, he kicks you out. Because you, you just did something very suspicious when you walked into his bar. Just like, you know, walking in in full armor and carrying a pole arm is very suspicious. No, I don't want your business because... Bad things are going to happen if you're around. It's, it's obvious, you know. Every time an eventual party comes in, bad things happen. Because they're the only ones who are armed <laughs> with pole arms. Um, walking around the city, you're going to... Again, city guard is likely to carry pole arms. Other people are going to attract attention. So, again, walking around the city with your halbred or your, you know eight-foot spear or whatever is going to attract the attention of the city guard, and you're going to be harassed a lot by city officials just because you're carrying a stupid weapon, well, again, not a stupid weapon for what it was designed for, stupid as a one-on-one -on -one weapon. And it's obvious you look like someone who's out for trouble. So, again, that's, you know, people, you know, Want to complain? I, you know, the, the bit, you mentioned something like this. Why? Why are you being so technical during a fantasy game? And it's like, well, because the players get technical on everything else. You know, the, the game master does something they don't like, and they get all technical. That wouldn't happen in real life. Well, it's a fantasy game. It would happen here. So, I think the inclusion of pole arms was. They got this cool factor about them, and so people wanted them, and um, the people who designed the games didn't think about all the ramifications or just the impracticality of it. Um, you know, there's a, just a lot, if it's, it's a superior weapon because it does more damage, and there are no negatives to it because, um, and there should be, they should, at the very least, they should put some negatives into it, trying to use a pull arm, more than just, you know, Someone can close in on you, because actually someone closing in on you, like, there are ways to avoid that. And there are, there are, there are some of them, they got the little hooks on the back so you can defend against someone closing in on you. You know, the threat of someone closing in on you is not as big as the problem with this extra handle hanging out behind you and hitting anyone who's behind you. And so, again, not, in, not a weapons expert, but... There's just some very common sense things where I would say pole arms shouldn't be used one on one unless you really don't have a choice. You know, great formation weapons, you know, used for like I said, hundreds of years. But as we got away from formation fighting, we stopped using pole arms. Part of that was because we had guns, but you know, other people still used swords in battle, people still used other weapons. Um but the pole arms just sort of disappeared because they were less practical for one-on-one -on -one fighting. And so that's all I had. Have a good day.